Welcome to Top Video Game Podcast of the Week from HorribleNight.com. It is Thursday, September 5th, 2013. I'm your host, Justin Lacey, and joining me tonight, Jason Thompson. What up, everybody? Thanks for jumping in tonight, man. Short notice. Hey, no, no problem. I, I'm glad to be here. Yeah, we've, we have, we don't talk much at night, you and I. We, yeah, we talk we, as the sun's don't. going down, but not after twilight, so we'll see what that does to the mood of this conversation. But this is the weekly interactive podcast from HorribleNight.com. We post weekly questions on our Facebook page and all of our social media stuff and uh, interact with our live chat audience on Twitch TV. Hi, chat audience. And uh, get their answers as well as ours about the best and the worst of the week in gaming. But before we get to that, Jason, you have issued a challenge to your friends of physical activities that I don't understand. Please tell me what's going on. I did, I did. Well, I got back to working out. I've got a most mostly a group of two guys and myself that get together uh, pretty much every day during the week to work out. And uh, the the way the this this challenge came about was my friend and I did a chest workout, and you know it was best you know chest workout we've done in a while. And uh, phrases I've never uttered. Keep yeah, going. well, well, that's. <laughs> That's okay. Um, and so he was like, you want to do a couple sets of push-ups, you know, at, at, at the end? And I was like, yeah, that's that's fine. And so, you know, we get, you know, get ready to do the push-ups. And he's like, what do you, like, you want to do 100? And I'm like, <laughs> all right. No. Are you smoking crack? Like, who, who, who does 100 push-ups after a chest workout, let alone 100 push-ups, period, in one, you know, one go? And so, you know, of course, we're like, whatever, let's let's see how many we can do. About 20 minutes later and 28 into it, we, we decided to kind of let it go. So uh, then the next day, I just ran, I sent him a text message, and I was like, all right, here we go. 100 push-ups a day. Doesn't matter how you do them. Maybe you do them, you know, 10 at a time, 20 at a time. But as long as you get 100 push-ups in, you're good to go. So we're on day three. Okay. I have done my hundred. When I streamed earlier, it had done seventy-five. Yeah, what's your strategy? You just say so you're doing them in blocks twenty-five, or I have been doing them in blocks of twenty-five. Um, although yesterday I got to fifty, then I did fifteen, and then I thought, wow, thirty-five is a really awkward number. <laughs> so, so I'm not, I can't even remember how I did it, but I'm quickly finding out that. Maybe, and I want to do this for 30 days. I'm finding out that maybe doing it every day may not work. Oh, yeah. So I, what we decided was is that... 700 a week? <laughs> well, you get, yeah, so it, well, it's like 3,000 total. So right. the month, yeah. Right. So you, I, th- well, I think what we decided was that you get a day off so that you can let your muscles rest. Because we're also working out on top of this, which is crazy enough then yeah, yeah you guys are nuts <laughs> then one of the other days you only have to do 50 so you do 100 for five days 50 for the one and then you get a day off so i think tomorrow is going to be my day off we'll say that that name gonna... of a challenge is a lot less catchy than 100 push-ups a day right so <laughs> i don't know we we kind of loosely shook hands on that uh, agreement after i think because he didn't do he didn't do his hundred until after our workout, mm-hmm. so I got to just sort of stand there and yeah. laugh at him while he. Do you work out? Do you work out every noodled day? Noodled his way through it. <laughs> hey, guy, you work out every day. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, yeah, I try to. Okay. I try to. So I was so far say, this yeah. week, I've worked out every day, but yesterday because I was out of town. My yeah, my instinct. And I go to the to... I go to the actual gym. So yeah, my instinct would be to take the like do the push-ups on the day you're not working out and doing everything else but i don't i don't know how to work with your daily physical activity routines that's just uh beyond me well well i get off work at two o'clock usually every day two or three o'clock so i kind of have the rest of the day to do whatever so i have the time to work out gotcha and i take it and i used to live across the street from a gym and I found out working out around two o'clock gives me a lot of energy. That's why I'm here. I think probably because I have to get up at five o'clock in the morning. I could go to a gym. So I have at, weird hours. at two o'clock in the afternoon. Like 
my schedule's never worked out that way. Totally. It's, it's either like you go with the block in the morning where there's a ton of people there or the block in the evening where there's a ton of people there. And I was like, I don't like a lot of people around yeah. when I'm working out. So that's that's one of my sure. 1,000 excuses why I don't work out. But yeah, the main one is I'm lazy. Yeah, I mean, so, but I like this. I like that these. That usually works against you. I like these. Uh, the uh, idea of the the hundred push-ups a day, or like I've had luck with that and sit-ups, like just just to do something. But in addition to working out, uh, you, yeah. you guys are much more manly than I am. If you if you or don't get the hundred in, you if you don't get the hundred in, you still did something that you weren't going to do. You know, like you say you got 25 in. You still did 25 push-ups. That's still going to do something for your body. Sure. You know, so that's kind of how I see it. But I will tell you, the last one is always the hardest. Yeah. So the first, the first it, one's pretty was, hard. The very, very it, first one's pretty hard. As it was tonight. And I can't do them with uh, palms on the, the ground. I have to do with, I have to do like the closed fist. And so my knuckles are all pretty... Rolled up. As right long now, as your so. knees are off the ground, we will we will accept that. They are. There are, okay, there have good. been no girl push ups so far. <laughs> yes, this is the workout podcast of the week, Nomar. <laughs> um, I have brought you brought push ups. I've brought puppies to this podcast because we've been Word. puppy sitting, uh, which is an adventure for me since I'm allergic to dogs. Uh, we have a little two month old dachshund, smallest dog in the history of my living room. I would um, say it's. Uh, but yeah, I we've got a couple guys on the podcast that have gotten dogs in the in the last year, and the dogs always show up on the podcast, and I'm just kind of like, hey, I don't really understand why those dogs take take up so much time. You know, like can't they be alone for an hour? The answer is no, they can't. So uh, it has uh, taken up more of my evening time than I anticipated, but it's also fun because this is a temporary thing, so I don't mind playing with the dog. But is is this your first night? This is night number three. The dog's been fine at night, honestly. Oh, like, really? Yeah. Wow. So that, that's been, it'll whine for maybe five, ten minutes and then realizes nobody's coming and goes to sleep. So Awesome. I, that's usually not the case. Yeah. So, I mean, I don't sleep much anyway, so that that would have been, it would have been a, taken a lot for that dog to interrupt my sleep schedule, but uh, so far, so good. So, uh, I think it's too young to like be attached to its home or something to know that it's in a different place at least that's what i think so but uh that's been fun and then um i just i just want to call a shout out to since it's the uh the kickoff of the nfl season tonight um they were delayed by weather the kickoff i don't really understand how that works with football but uh they're in denver right yeah like i don't really i didn't figure out what was happening like i don't think they have really tornadoes thunderstorms that type of stuff but maybe maybe it was but that was well, I, I saw a tweet earlier the last time denver hosted the ravens was in like january and yeah. the temperature was like seven degrees right and tonight it's 92 so i think there might have been a heat advisory huh so they may have done it f- based off of heat but yeah that's always it's always weird when football gets delayed by weather because it's it's kind of well, especially an NFL game. Yeah, yeah, the first one they, but it must right. have been bad if they push it off. So I thought that was weird. So that mm. that, that was worth uh, pointing out this evening because that's going on. But uh, right. but video games, guys. Now we got our workouts out of the way, our puppies and our football, which is what you all came here for. Uh, but now video games. So game of the week. Uh, you which one? Which one are you gonna choose here? You can talk about both, but you're gonna have to pick one by the end. Okay, I will definitely pick one by the end. So I finally got around to purchasing Rogue Legacy in Spelunky, mainly because well, Spelunky I chose mainly because I wanted to be one of the cool kids, mm-hmm. and I wanted to be on the leaderboard, <laughs> one way or the other. If I was at the bottom, whatever, my name was still on they do the leaderboard. Give, the leaderboard does give participation trophies. Yeah. So. <laughs> I've only done it once. I've only played it, you know, once. I haven't gotten sort of into the daily challenge routine. Um, but I honestly, f- I, I kind of came to realize how much alike the games are, which is kind yeah. of strange. Like they're, you you know, you run around, you collect things, you you know, either stab things to death or whip things to death, and you die a lot. <laughs> and one is funner than the other. For me, Rogue Legacy is way more fun. Way more fun than Spelunky. Spelunky makes me want to throw 
something through the window. Mm -hmm. And so my attitude towards it is very negative at the moment. And it seems like others are understandable to that. I know Coop sort of, I I think, I think it was Coop. He tweeted me like, you know, you just have to get used to the game bringing you down or something like that. And I was just like, I don't know if I'll ever be that comfortable with it. So, um, I've, I've, I've streamed both. I streamed both the other day. I actually streamed Rogue Legacy a little bit earlier. In your first Horrible Night stream. Yes, it was. It was a very interesting one, nonetheless. Mm -hmm. Um, But, I don't know. There's just like, with Rogue Legacy, when I die, I want to keep playing. It does, so I mean, when I die, I'm just like, all right, I did the job I was required of. Let I mean, me go play something else. When you die in Spelunky, it punches you in the gut or kicks you in the nuts. There's really, like, no way around it. Rogue Legacy, the punishment for dying, I mean, it's a very... Um, well, you get to keep your money, they, usually. They, yeah, but they have they do such a good job of making you feel like you've made a little bit of progress and the grind is fun. That game is a grind. And yeah. Um, oh, and you have the opportunity to sort of continue off where you where you left, whereas what, Spelunky, you just start all over. Which is interesting because I think so. I'm, because I'm so used to playing uh, Spelunky, and I would throw in the Binding of Isaac into this mix just from the fact that it's got the randomly yeah. generated levels. That I was I play all three of these games very similarly. Um, so when I was watching you play Rogue Legacy this weekend, you did something I never do, which is I've never e- used the architect once. So, oh. which is you pay him money, uh, right before you walk through the gate and he locks the castle down so it doesn't randomly generate again. And you, yeah. you were just trying to like explore the whole castle, which is really actually kind of cool. And it just mm-hmm. kind of turned the light on for me that there's a different way to play this game and, I can kind of break some of my old habits because I, I get to like level 60 in Rogue Legacy and, and stop playing just out of yeah. uh, disinterest because I was like, now, I, now I'm feeling the grind even though the game does feel different every time I play. But uh, but yeah, there's there's just sometimes where, yeah, I want to, let me do some uh, do like a completionist run a little bit before sure. I reset the castle. So I, that was kind of cool. I hadn't even thought about that. Yeah, the reason why I was ma- mostly doing that was just the familiarity with where my surroundings were so it's like okay i know what to expect when i go into this room and i know i haven't found sort of the the nice rune or the even the boss gate or anything like that so yeah it's it's nice to be able to run back into a castle and know where things are but then again if you sort of get bored with it you just don't pay the architect and you run back in there and it's all different again Mm -hmm. which clearly i kept paying the architect and you guys were like well you, you're not going to get any more gold, and you should probably just move on from there. And, and that was just a sort of a, a new thing for me, too. So I, I learned a little bit from the experience as well. But that's cool. Did you notice a change in either the amount of gold you were getting or the experience you were getting when when you were and weren't using the Architect? Were you leveling up faster after you started using the Architect? Um, or was it about the same? I don't really... I, I, I see getting, well, there was one time where I went through and I got like 2,000 gold and I had paid the architect, so I would have gotten a ton more gold if that was the case. Um, but I will say I don't really pay attention to, up. Uh, like I went from 15 to 28. You're, yeah, you're like near 30 when I last saw you. So Yeah, so and I barely pay attention to that. So yeah. I would say okay. that I have noticed that I do get more gold I think when you do use the architect because you're able to go through the whole castle but maybe not I, I think maybe there's maybe there's yeah I'd be interesting in uh, like I actually want to go back and kind of compare yeah. strategies because uh, uh, I'm curious and, and I don't know like as you build up the classes in that game and you know combine with the architect and the runes that you can use you you basically based on what class you pick and and what type of run you want to do, whether it's a gold-heavy run or you're going after the boss or you're just going to try to kill as many uh, little little enemies as possible. Yeah. Um, like, there's just different ways you can go about it, and you can kind of control that experience a little bit more. And I, I think that's what makes this game um, you know, stand apart from a lot of the other roguelikes out there and a lot of the other indie games that have come out before it. Like, this just had, I don't know, just... Uh, it's just so well designed. It's 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 fantastic. Yeah, I'll I'll say that I played. I think I played a variety of different styles in this afternoon's run through, because I did notice that when I did 
do a random castle again, I was getting more stuff real quick. Gotcha. So. Uh, let's see. Games of the week from chat. Uh, Verdian has continued to play through both Penny Arcades on the Rain Slick Precipice of Darkness, number three and four. Those are the uh, um, kind of 16 bit JRPG style uh, games that uh, Zeboid Games uh, made. And uh, I think from some chats with him, he was saying that. Uh, three is much stronger than four, uh, mm. but they're both pretty easily digestible and cheap. I, I keep meaning to go back and play these games. Um, Ethan's game of the week is Outlast. It has sucked his life away. Oh, yeah. Uh, I can't wait to see what his final verdict in. He's gone through a lot of motions with this game. And I, um, I will say that um, both he and I have committed to live streaming Outlast and Amnesia Machine for Pigs to compare our experiences because... Um, nice. We had some interesting debates, so I'm gonna try. I'm actually gonna play Outlast this weekend, so I'll live stream while I'm playing, and we'll see how that goes. Uh, that's the ho- big horror release of the week. Uh, yeah. Cole's been playing Wise. I, uh, I, it's an RPG. I don't know, but it's really sucked his life away. So, if you like RPGs, Cole um, tends to get sucked into the good ones. So, uh, let's see. Aaron has been playing a lot of co-op Rayman Legends with his wife. Uh, which I think is kind of cool. Uh, yeah. That's also in my queue, but uh, did not overtake my game of the week yet. And uh, Justin Gifford's game of the week continues to be Saints Row 4. He thinks it's pretty much perfect. So <laughs> somebody somebody mentioned the other day that a lot of us have kind of like run away from that real, really quick. But uh, and I think that's right. I I stopped playing it for a little while, but mostly because my machine isn't the greatest performer. Mm-hmm. So like if I go to drive, it's just painful but running oh. around and jumping and stuff is fine i just was like oh look i've got money now let me buy these two Other games stuff, that yeah. everyone else has been playing so i've been um i'm probably halfway through the game i've been playing it offline um we streamed it quite a bit that first week and a half yeah. uh i know ethan uh completed the game and aaron's pretty close so yeah. um we're gonna do a, a checkpoint podcast on that once i've finished it just to um, gotcha. uh see what everybody's thoughts are there and uh, my game of the week, holy shit. Like, I thought I was prepared for Brothers A Tale of Two Sons because, first of all, I wanted to play it just because I thought it looked interesting. It's got, it's gameplay gimmick or, or feature is that you control two brothers, one brother's, the older brother controlled with the left stick, the younger brother controlled with the right stick. And I was going to jump all over it. Uh, Starbreeze, Starbreeze developed it, one of my favorite developers. They're, you know them from... Uh, the Darkness and the Riddick games. Um, so this is, but this is like a fantasy adventure, and um, in a world that kind of reminds me a little bit of of, of Fable. Um, uh, and um, but anyway, I it came out for Summer of Arcade, and so I was ready to get it, but I haven't really been playing my Xbox all that much. So when I can, I try to get these games on the PC lately. Yeah. And for whatever, usually though. Um, the Summer of Arcade games are exclusive to that platform for at least six months. Three, yeah. six months, uh, three minimum. But right as this game's coming out, they announced that it's coming out for PC uh, within a month. So I waited, and it finally came out for PC this week. And the it, this game is just hitting all the right chords with me as far as the story goes. I, I was reading... A lot of reviews that were already saying this is one of my best games of the year, and I just didn't expect. That. I thought this game would be kind of, kind of broken actually with the, with the promise of uh, controlling two characters at once. It would just be. I, I thought it might either be monotonous or broken, and you know maybe charming. Maybe it would have a really a really nice world to explore, which it does. But they, you know, it's kind of a puzzle adventure game. There's a lot of climbing puzzles. There's a lot of like cooperative tactics where you use one character to distract while the other one um you know uh, holds open a gate or they but but the puzzles are designed really well but the, but the the key here is that everything is designed to have to um tie into this older brother little brother relationship that i think just resonates with just about anybody yeah. and i just immediately connected it with the characters um I feel like an asshole saying this, but I don't. I don't know if they're speaking a, an actual foreign language, or if they're kind of just doing like a simlish 
language, but there's no there's no um, there's no English in the game. There's no subtitles, but the characters communicate in a way that you know you know basically yeah. what they're saying. And uh, I want to say there's it's just probably gibberish. It, I the only reason I I question it is because the developer is Swedish and oh okay so I yeah it, I could be wrong there. So apologies for that ignorance, but. Regardless, they it communicates the story without words. You yeah. know, it just it's just, and it makes you I, in that regard. It makes you connect with the characters even more. And I just like, man, every time one of the brothers dies, it just like it just <laughs> kind of hits you in the gut. And it's it's great. It just really really sucked me in. And there's been some some just really fantastical moments that remind me of. You know the best moments of uh, games like Ico and Shadow of the Colossus and uh, Journey. It's like on that level of just of uh, majesticism. Am I going to make a word? Make up a word there? But uh, um, it well, just it also just looks good too. Yeah, it's beautiful. It's a yeah. uh, it's a little bit stylized, but I mm-hmm. I like it because they didn't go for ultra realism realism, but it just sure. it, it's it's gorgeous. So. Yeah, this I'm gonna be talking about this game for the rest of this year, so just be prepared. And um, I I've heard that it's only like five or six hours. I'm two or three hours in, so I'm hoping to finish it in the next couple playthroughs. But I'm gonna keep streaming that as well. Yeah, I heard four, so yeah. So I might yeah, who knows? Yeah. But the first two to three have been f- fantastic. Just so if you don't mind me asking, how much is it? I it's fifteen, I believe. Okay. So it's not more than fifteen. Um, and yeah, it's available on. Uh, it also came out for PS3 uh, on the PlayStation Network this week too. So get cool. it on, get it on pretty much anything. So uh, horrible night highlights. What stood out to you? The uh, Giffords article just <laughs> stood out to me because I actually hadn't really even noticed the story or heard about the story, which is strange because I work in radio and usually that stuff gets sort of brought to the to the top of the you know, re, you know, repetitiveness of the top of the hour news cycle. So the, the article I'm referring to is the Grand Theft Auto 4, uh, where the kid apparently, you know, was playing Grand Theft Auto 4 and then found a gun and then shot his grandmother. You know, that's kind of what was implied in the, the CNN sort of breaking news thing. Mm-hmm. Um, but I, what I really enjoy about Horrible Night is that, you know, there's a wide variety of, of writing styles and content. And I think Justin brings a really interesting perspective because of, you know, his legal background. And in this case, he really sort of breaks it down in both sort of, you know, editorial and legal, you know, perspectives, which I think is, which is refreshing. Um, I learned a lot of things on the legal side of things that I wasn't aware of, Um, you know, and of course, you know, there's a bit of sarcasm thrown in there too. I mean, now that I've met, you know, him in, in the flesh, I get it. I get it. So, um, but yeah, I just, you know, it was just really interesting that, you know, the whole, you know, I, I, I felt like the whole point of, the, point of the article, and I think you were involved in this, is the fact that, you know, who bought this game for this kid? He's eight. Mm-hmm. That's crazy. Like, clearly, somebody, you know, the kid didn't just walk into the store with his 60 bucks or whatever it costs now and buy this game, you know? And so I, I just, no, I just it, thought it, he. I just thought he brought a really refreshing perspective on it, in both it, sort of trying to be funny about it because you know we deal with horrible situations with comedy. A lot of people do. A lot of my friends do, at least. And at the same time, I learned a lot. Yeah, he's really good about that. Like he just some of his legal breakdowns, and I like. I'm always. Uh, I'm always happy when he's excited to write something. Like yeah. it doesn't matter on the topic. And this, this I told him was easily his best or best article, at least in my opinion, because you could just tell the, the 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 passion behind it. Because um, you know the big thing we joked about was that everybody was reacting to how did he get a hold of Grand Theft Auto? It was like, but the real problem was how to get a hold of the gun. Sure. And um, so he wrote this pretty quickly, and before we could get it up, that actually you know. After the police actually did the investigation, they ruled it as a an accidental shooting. And you know, right. versus the initial report made it sound like literally he put the game down and had the idea from yeah. the game like, to go get like the gun. And, yeah. So, and the fact that the kid I, is eight years old is still it's just it it's it's it was a it was a tragedy. It was yeah. it was 
Well, as long as they keep making Grand Theft Auto games, there's they're not going to get away from this. They aren't. I mean, it's but, the Grand Theft Auto series is just it's 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 the most popular. It's such an easy target. Most, right, because you know, because it's I won't say it's the most popular, but it's definitely popular and it's definitely violent. And mm-hmm. those two combinations in the mainstream media, you know, in the perspective of the average, you know, dad, you know, dad and mom that are watching this that have clearly no idea. I don't know, he, there's just something about it. he hit home with a lot of points that um, I think are they, they tend to come up in these articles that try to tie things to video game violence, but right. um, but just just the fact that you know CNN went they they went out of their way to say yeah we did this to get traffic you know yeah. we we used that headline for that purpose and um, he was just he also just smartly and I don't know I, I appreciate his sarc when his sarcasm is used to basically clarify how obvious this should be that we right. need to be having a different conversation, but you keep, you want to have the conversation about, um, you know, video games or guns, but not like just mental health and how we're raising our children and, and, and that side of it. So it was like, he, he did a great job of just, he cast a wide swath there and I think yeah. really hit home with some good points. And, um, he's, like I said, if you've, it's a great introduction to his writing style because he's got a lot of random stuff on our site. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I would I would say what was was really interesting about it. Once I read it, I kind of skimmed through it again, and I think there's something for everybody. Whatever your your line of thinking is, I think you're going to learn something one way or the other. You know, I think he's argumentative, but not so much so that you know. Yeah, I mean, he pr- approaches it from the. I'm, I'm going to lay out the facts for you. I'm going to tell you my my opinion, but here are all sure. here are the facts, so you can form your own. So. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, it, he's he's been you know involved in the site since the early days, and we've always appreciated the the diversity in writing style and topics that that he brings to the site. So yeah, I mean, uh, it's not like every you know video game website has you know a legal guy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Other than the one that you know is fighting comments and yeah. you know cease and desist letters. Yeah, when when you do inevitably come after us, you're also going to deal with him. That's the other, that's the other side of things. Yeah. <laughs> Um, I'll just give a quick shout out to Ethan, um, posted a reflex review of chapter two of the last door, which is a adventure game that he's found online, uh, has a free demo for it. And, um, it's very, very old school, but doesn't have a, I haven't heard much about it other than from him. And he keeps going on about how amazing it is and, um, uh, is continuing to play through that. And we'll probably, uh, review the entire, uh, series once it's all out. Um, but I just wanted to. Uh, bring that to everybody's attention to check out the last door if you like adventure games uh, at all. And speeding right along to worst of the week in gaming, let's start with uh, what came in from chat. And uh, first here, I'll start with Gifford actually. Um, he and I, um, what did he did he skip it? He was too busy. Yeah, he was too. Anyway, he didn't answer the right question correctly, so that's okay. That's okay, Gifford. You've been. Uh, he's, he's not great at everything. <laughs> we I actually thought he was gonna. We had a lengthy conversation about a specific topic, so I thought he'd bring that up. Um, <laughs> Aaron's worst of the week is Ethan being stuck with that naked buddy in Outlast for way, way too long. Oh, yeah. I and gotcha. He, Ethan uh, did get stuck in Outlast, and I think the game kind of broke on him. So, <laughs> um, just be prepared for, you know, survival horror games that have environmental puzzles that you need to solve to run away from things. Um, when you do get stuck, your game kind of breaks down. So, yeah, and, and your your sort of entertainment factor in your stream is something you can't cut away from. Yeah, <laughs> and then. Um, yeah, Cole actually brought up what I thought Gifford was going to bring up is that um, uh, Penny, Penny Arcade's Gabriel Mike Krahulik, um has continued to stoke the fires with his uh, his Dick Wolf um, <laughs> what the, the Dick Wolf Gate and uh, basically it's really hard to sum this up. I will post a link in the in the notes, but there is essentially a Penny Arcade strip that dealt with uh, that dealt with rape, but in the regards to 
how in games like World of Warcraft, where you're doing a bunch of quests, you know, sometimes you will, you know, you'll only have to collect five of something or save five people, but there are still tons of other people in the scenario. And so anyway, it, 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 it made a joke re- related to that you're that you were still leaving this guy to be raped by the dick wolves because you'd only saved you've already saved your five guys. Oh, anyway, I thought you were talking about the Law and Order guy. No, no, <laughs> no. And uh, so that was a strip two or three years ago. But essentially, all the publicity that that received, the way they kind of handled the fallout, has been. Um, it, it just will not go away, and he keeps kind of stoking the fires. And this is the one of the two main guys behind Penny Arcade, and he he brought it up again at PAX. And you'll have to read up on it, but um, all I can say, um, and, and Gifford and I were talking about this, but basically I gave up on this guy a year ago when this thing wouldn't go away. Um, I thought the original strip was funny, but, but trying to defend it to rape victims is... Uh, just crossing into a territory that is unnecessary, yeah. and um, but for me, Pax is bigger than these two guys at this point. Um, Child's Play, the charity, is bigger than these two guys at this point, um, and I kind of look at it the way I, I look at Live Strong. That that's a a great fan foundation with a great cause. Don't uh, I no longer care about who who created it, and uh, so that's that's my personal opinion. Um, like I said, there are there's a ton of people covering this piece right now, but it is a yeah. uh, a big hot story this week. So, um, Ethan is uh, still recovering from the nerd flu. Uh, I don't believe he had a good time at Gamescom, for the record. Um, and then Verdian's worst of the week. He wanted to complete complete Penny Arcade three and four, and as he's at the end of four. The game changed from being basically linear to an open world where you must farm to get get stronger, which ruined the flow of his relaxed gaming adventure. So that's a gotcha. shame. Yeah, uh, I don't remember if they've said they're going to do a, a fifth or a sixth episode. I'll be curious. Uh, but what is your worst of the week, Jason? Well, I was trying to play a little bit of catch up today because, I mean, I, I was asked to do this kind of last minute and I had been doing so much streaming lately that I really haven't had time to read up on news and that's my bad but uh one thing i ran into was that okay so they they gave us finally a date for the xbox one november 22nd whatever right. okay perfect like we were anticipating that that's great that's great news you finally got around to doing that when you could have easily done that you know two months <laughs> ago you you knew the date you you knew how many units you were going to be selling you know whatever that's fine because you know that they, they could have made a bigger deal about it but anyways they a couple days ago or whatever, they were like, all right, here's the date. Then I'm reading this thing today where they're basically, oh, and then they said, okay, we're going to keep the Xbox 360 alive for three more years. Whatever, that, that's yeah, interesting. Right. Like, I know that my 360, as long as it, you know, held is alive. The PlayStation 2 was going strong for about five years, so. Right. It's like, okay, so, like, I know exactly, you know, what I'm dealing with here. Then I'm reading this news about backwards compatibility. Basically, it is a theoretical proposal according to Microsoft. And their whole reasoning is is that, oh, we've got this cloud that Mm -hmm. might be able to one day process video games to your computer from the cloud. And it's just like, shut up. (laughs) Like, it either has it or it doesn't. You, Because basically at this point, they could tell us anything is possible with the cloud. Right. And we we would believe it. And then when it doesn't happen, they're going to have to back away from it. Which is actually kind of similar to what Sony has all but come out and said with their streaming services they're going to be off- offering that you might be able to do backwards compatibility with that, but they haven't called it that. And I don't know the fact that it just feels like still it's I don't I don't I'm not necessarily annoyed by this, but it's just it's a more kind of point and laugh at the situation when you just realize that how many of the policies they laid out at E3. That Microsoft has like kind of doubled back on, right. and this was one nobody was talking about. I think exactly. we all we all kind of accepted that these consoles were moving in a slightly different direction. That backwards compatibility wasn't going to be uh, well, they possible. It, so why, like, I don't know, why bring it up in this theoretical? Uh, right. It's now's not the time. Like, get the technology figured out, then surprise us with it. Is kind of my my theory right now. It, that, that's what I'm thinking because they said no. They said no. This is a whole different direction for the Xbox, and then they tell us on top of that, like two days ago, that. Oh yeah, by the way, your 360 will still last 3 more years, you know, with releases. Like we're still going to support it in that instance. 
perfect. And then now they're like, oh, by the way, we could possibly do backwards compatibility on top of the fact that we're supporting your 360. Like, why? Like, like you said, there's no reason to tell us that. Like, surprise us. Like, oh, by the way, all those games that you used to have on the 360 that you, like, want to play again, here you go. Like, this is the cool cloud service. Because the, the, the direct quote was, there are so many things that our servers can do. <laughs> yeah, I mean... But that's the uh, most g- vanilla, generic statement. It's funny. I just... Uh, just that... Uh, Microsoft is banking so much on the their web ser- their their cloud services and, and Azure and it's a it's a great it's a great platform. Yeah. Um, but it just it feels like somebody's somebody's line items like their their marketing points got got crossed a little bit and they're just trying to like boost those up and yeah this this sounds oh. like somebody didn't really know what they were trying to say but they it, I don't know. It, I mean I've come to accept that the the 360s backwards compatibility is awful. Yeah. The the perfect example of that is if you have an old copy from the original Xbox of I think it's Knights of the Old Republic, either one or two, it does I don't think it really matters. Put that in your 360. If you don't like your 360 anymore, it'll catch it on fire. I'm convinced. <laughs> if you want to just get rid of your 360, put it in there and see what happens because it's awful. Yeah, I don't And don't and don't commit don't, to I, I guess my my thing is the don't all. don't bring this up until you have a solution. Right. Don't give me go, don't give me theoreticals here. Well, the only reason why Sony's been able to do it is because they've actually implemented the hardware in a select number of their systems. Mm. Like they actually have the hardware built into it. So I don't know. It's just it's it's just annoying because again, there's no reason for it. Yeah. Either tell us about something else or just remain quiet until it's something. Um, my worst of the week. Um, is it's, it's really picky. This is actually a good week uh, if this is as bad as I can come up with. But the fact that I didn't know Brothers was coming out this week until the day of, I'm just it's 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 really hard to I don't know I don't know who's behind the release list of downloadable games, but like Steam needs to put together something like some sort of heads up because like every day like they they have their little coming soon tab. But each week there are there are like three or four games on there that pop up, uh, and uh, the only reason I call out Brothers is because they actually, like I said, they made a point to say that the game would be out on August twenty eighth, and which is a Thursday uh, yeah. last week, and there was nothing that day, no update, no nothing, and then so I'm like, maybe this is like just delayed infinitely, but I saw that it was still coming out to PS three on Tuesday of this week. And then it just showed up on PC when it showed up on PS3. So um, somebody needs to control. Someone needs to take control of these uh, this downloadable release calendar and let us uh, make our budgets a little bit easier. But yeah, I agree with that. <laughs> how nitpicky is that? Um, best of the week. Uh, I <laughs> actually um, came across a story today that. There's a developer named David Gallant who made a game um, based on his real job. And he had a game jam, and it got some attention because um, the game is called I Get This Call Every Day. And long story short, he was fired from the job once people tied his his game back to what his job was. and. Yeah. Um, anyway, he's kind of gotten some sympathy from game journalists and, and fans of the game, and he's trying to basically become a full-time um, independent game developer and needed some help um, raising enough money so that he could get into IndieCade this year. And mm. so he asked for, uh, I think, 650 euro or pounds or um, and put together an Indiegogo campaign. Well, Rock, Paper, Shotgun picked up on the story. I think a few others did as well. And they're just like, you know what? He's not really asking for that much. And uh, if you liked his game, come support this guy. Let's, you know, let's see what he does if he gets thousands of dollars. And that, yeah. that campaign is already, let's let's see, let's see where he's at right now. As for 650 as of today, he's at 1500 Wow. So just, I don't know, just the fact that people did come together and... Um, give this guy some extra cash, which he basically said is, you know, it might go towards 
me not having to crash at a friend's place while I go to Indiegogo and the rest is going to rent and bills. <laughs> so, nice. um, hey. but yeah, is it, the game's supposed to be actually pretty funny. It's about being in a call center and, um, it's mm-hmm. just kind of, it actually, I got to confuse with papers, please. At one point, as far as just people are making these games about these really, you know, monotonous jobs and they're kind of fun and kind of funny. And this guy ended up getting fired for it. So, uh, but it's 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 fun to see um, the gaming community come around uh, uh, in a in a positive way like that. So that was uplifting mm-hmm. for me. Um, That's good. From chat, best of the week. Aaron is <laughs> excited about Mighty Number no. Nine, which is the Kickstarter from Kiji Inafune, the creator of Mega Man. Um, he is yeah. kickstarting a ne- the next Mega Man, and. Um, I don't have a problem saying that uh, I <laughs> I'm a backer of this game, but anybody that knows me, I'm a huge Mega Man fan. We won't go into which um, reward I was really after, but let's just say all of them were scary to me as a Mega Man fan, as far as the stuff that he was offering uh, for the different levels of donation. And uh, that game is going to have no problem. It's already hit its goal, but it's going to have no problem hitting all of its stretch goals and it's coming out for. Uh, PC and all the consoles. So, um, so yeah, it's it's kind of weird how close the game is to Mega Man. Um, he's as close as you can get without actually violating the, violating the copyrights. But apparently, he says um, they've done what they needed to do to make it different enough. So, um, we're gonna get another Mega Man game. There's nothing wrong with that. <laughs> um, what do you think I mean, about? It's, it's straight from the source. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. Like that's that's what's even better about it. No, no, it's the it was it's the closest thing I've had uh, since the 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 original Double Fine Kickstarter. As far as just like kind of a bigger, yeah, I mean, his team's small. I mean, he's completely independent now, but like a bigger name yeah. actually giving the opportunity for crowdfunding. So that was kind of that was kind of interesting. I did not expect that at all. Um, Cole's uh, best of the week was Gifford's uh, Grand Theft Auto article. So. Uh, Way to go, Gifford. Yeah. <laughs> and then Ethan's is that Metro Last Light is on sale this week on Steam. It's like I saw that. It's super cheap. Was it like was it fifteen bucks? It was. It was super Ooh. cheap. I haven't even gotten through uh, Metro twenty thirty three yet. Yeah. So yeah, grab grab that. And then uh, for Dean's uh, best of the week is Ethan's Outlast playthrough because the first hour was amazing. I would I would definitely agree with that. And then uh, he got. <laughs> he got a too many beers and courage, and the game became annoying after failing multiple times. It was the best yeah. thing in gaming. So, uh, what do you have? What's your best of the week? I've just got two quick th- things. Basically, um, one of them was an article I read earlier today from Rock Paper Shotgun. Um, I didn't realize that there was going to be a sequel, or at least there's a sequel in development to Hotline Miami. Mm-hmm. And apparently, there's you know the demo that they were showcasing featured a sexual assault scene. Let me say that I'm not thinking that's the best in gaming. What I think is the best in gaming is that the fact that the developers took time to basically respond to some concerns from not only people playing the demo, but people sort of hearing about it. Yeah, and they, sort of trying to explain that you know there's more to why that's in the game. Yeah, it was uh, like I was kind of when I first saw it, surprised to see it in your best of the week. But after reading the interview, one the interview is really well conducted from Rock Paper Shotgun's yeah. side, but also like the developer just directly answers a lot of the like just the blunt concerns about having this sexual assault scene, and right. they kind of apologize for not having the foresight that you know while we're still trying to figure out how this this scene may or may not fit into the game um the fact that they didn't realize that whether or not it works within context that it doesn't yeah. work with no context in this demo so they decided to remove it from the demo and right. just being open and honest about that like that's i don't know that's the way to go and the fact that they it, said you know we're gonna we don't know if it'll be in here we don't know what our ending our beginnings gonna be like we're still gonna yeah. test through all that stuff and just um, that was it was just super awesome the way they responded to it. Well, it was just refreshing because not only did they sort of they, they didn't answer like yes or no questions. They certainly they opened it mm-hmm. up to uh, to a discussion because yeah. you know one of the things they pointed out was that you know some people took Hotline Miami as like a horror game, mm-hmm. you know, and and I can see that. And so they were thought, well, maybe let's add a couple of you know you know horrific moments, 
and you know, let, let's try to cater to all the different ways people sort of receive the original. And I think that's refreshing that they're you know responding to the way people responded to the first game. And, and they, I mean, it, it, I'm like I said, I'm not necessarily supporting you know what they're what content that they're throwing in there and you know in real life, obviously. But it definitely brings up a. This is a very interesting conversation, and the article is just really well done. So, um, the the last thing I'd add is they also went out of their way to uh, state a couple times that they're not including this to be prov- provocative or to right. get headlines. There's right. they're, they li- I mean, they legitimately believe they have a contextual reason and a storyline reason. Yeah. Why? Why? If this stays in the game, that it'll stay in the game. And well, it's just they're because- not seeking attention for it. Right, it's because basically the two people that you see are involved in this aren't really involved much more in the demo. But they mm-hmm. said, you know, in the storyline sense of the game itself, they they come back and there's a reason for it. So and it's just a really well done article. Yeah. And they also uh, made clear that this isn't the only female character in the game, that there are going right. to be other, uh, other female characters too. So uh, I'm just, you know, when Hotline Miami came out, it just like... I, I won't lie. I was drawn to its violence. I just thought it was yeah. it was incredibly uh, stylish and just I it, it just hit a you know a. Um, well, if you've ever seen a, a Nicholas Winding Refn film, you know like Drive or Bronson or yeah. anything like that, that's ex- it's right up the alley. I mean that's that's why I was drawn to it because I'm just drawn to his his style and his films. So you know the music, the the violence, everything is just. Rock and spot sometimes on. it's it, it's hard to tell with some of these games like how much thought the creators are actually putting into some of that stuff like how much is this style and how much of this is substance or how much yeah. of, how much are they aware of its style and substance and um i didn't really get a sense for that in the first game but just like in anything that they've gone and they've said since uh just getting to know this development team they've uh they mm-hmm. they're just they're they're really interesting and really thoughtful and uh i appreciate kind of Kind of their artistic artistic mindset that they're not just doing this just to do this, and right. um, the fact that there's there's more than meets the eye with Hollow Miami is kind of cool. So, mm-hmm. and the other thing I was just wanting to talk about real quick is the the fact that so right now there's Minecraft 1.6, which is a pretty significant update. You know, horses and all sorts of other crazy things. Whereas 1.7, they release you know snapshots, sort of little snippets of what they're implementing into the game. And so today they released the newest snapshot, which has completely revamped the fishing mechanic. So now when you fish for stuff, you might not get fish. You might get sort of junk okay. that's in the water or treasure, which is pretty cool. Um, or uh, they've implemented, I think, four new fish, which is pretty cool. Like they've got a puffer fish, and if you eat it, you almost basically die. Do they do they have that Paku fish, the, the, the ball breaker? Fish? They they don't. I don't. Okay. Not at this point. So there's okay. hope. There there is hope that you can you know, digitally have something bite your. <laughs> don't don't go skinny dipping in Minecraft. Your, That's your what I'm Mi- saying. Minecraft balls, but, um, <laughs> but you know it, it just adds this whole depth to the fishing mechanic that really was pointless before because you'd fish, you would feed it to a cat, and then you'd have it as a pet, and you could eat the fish, but there really wasn't sort of any fun to it like it was kind of monotonous and boring and it was pointless for the most part when you could easily just go, you know, get a bunch of cows and kill them and mm. get your food that way. So that's really cool. But one of the other really awesome things is they've added at least 10, if not 15 different types of biomes. Yeah. Talk, talk about this more. They're also talking about they were reworking it because it was making more ocean than they yeah. intended or something like that. Yeah. Do you know anything about that? Well, they were. They, what, what was happening was is that they was just making these sort of huge open, um, just water biomes that obviously you're not going to do anything in. So what they did was they made it so that the the biomes sort of connected to each other better. So there wasn't like this stark contrast between like you wouldn't go from a desert biome into like a snow biome okay. because in real life that really doesn't work. So essentially, and it, it's not going to be perfect every time, but like essentially a desert would connect to like a plains, which would connect to a forest, which would con- then connect to a snow. And when you look at a, a map, it's just way cleaner and sort of, it makes a lot more sense. Like gotcha. jungles aren't going to be right next to a snow biome mm-hmm. because that's not really how it works in real life. 
So they're just they're just adding more realistic environments and a huge variety of them. There's like now like deep ocean, which is like crazy because like before you could usually see the bottom of the ocean, whereas now when you look, it's just dark, and you know not to Dude, go down there. It's the Minecraft just, the Abyss. Let's yeah, do it. Which is which I'll is pretty cool. I watched that this cool. weekend. <laughs> yeah. So I, I don't know. I'm just I'm really excited to see that I I there's there's a there's a snapshot video from a guy that does videos called Doc M. And he just covers everything, and it's it's just really informative, and it looks just like a lot of fun. So I'm I really looking really forward to it. I don't really follow Minecraft's development, and, um, yeah. but do they have some sort of roadmap at this point that they're still working off of? Do they have like the broader plan that they've unveiled? They've un- they they I know they have, used to. We knew we knew new biomes were coming. We knew that they were going to tweak those. The fishing thing is completely new to me. I had no idea, yeah. and I I feel like I keep up with Minecraft pretty well either through watching uh, LPs of other uh, people, mostly the Minecraft guys. I watch mm-hmm. a lot of uh, them, and they, they usually have the inside scoop on a lot of things. Um, so we knew about the biomes. I had a pretty good idea of what to expect. There were, like, the deep ocean I wasn't aware of, which I think is really cool. But again, the whole, the whole fact that not only are they adding more fish, but they're also, like, you can enchant a fishing rod now to make it so that you have a better chance of catching treasure rather than fish or something like that so you know just like i said fishing was just very boring whereas like they're not forgetting things that they once put in the game for a reason they're sort of going back and going okay how can we improve this how can we make this more fun and i appreciate that another thing they're doing real quick is that they're allowing you to like before it was just like a master volume like it was all or nothing like music and then your sound effects whereas now they've broken down the sound effects to the point where you can sort of mute mobs or you can mute animals or jukeboxes like you can control all the levels of everything now so like if you have this like cow farm that's just like has like a hundred cows in it and they're just annoying you while you're trying to do something over wherever you can like turn that all the way down and it's not going to mute all the other sounds so it's pretty cool huh yeah i would just be really curious to see like i feel like once they kind of did the adventure update that i you know, I, I was like, oh, they, you know, they must be done. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, but what, this is one point, you say it was 1.7? 1. 1. 1.7 1. Um, is the, the one that will be coming out, hopefully. I just, I'm just kind of curious, as they continue to work on it, I just, I, like, I'm, I don't know, I really liked how, um, I, when I got into Planet Side 2, they always provided, like, a roadmap of, this is, like, the big picture, here's what's next. And yeah. I also, I kind of enjoyed that in my uh, World of Warcraft days. And I, I know that there are, there is a plan. I just I was just curious to see if they've uh, unveiled anything bigger. But yeah, um, we we knew the biome thing was coming, um, mm. and they were showing us sort of like this is what an old map overhead looks like, and this is what a new one looks like. But just the the wide variety of stuff is just terribly exciting. Cool. I think. Cool. Yeah, Minecraft continues to oh, man, just add to it. I um, last thing I'll say here is that I had a fun experience. Um, just kind of witnessing a next generation of gamers and how obsessed they are with Minecraft. And it's just yeah. really, really interesting. I was like, I can't even imagine if that was one of my first games. Like, yeah. I, it's going to be interesting to talk to people 20 years from now yeah. that, you know, got this as a kid because I mean, you know what, what, you know, Mario and Sonic and all those yeah, other games did for a- us. I mean, there's, there's kids walking around with creeper hoodies on. Yeah. Like that's, that's crazy. I mean, but I had a Mario three t-shirt. Yeah. <laughs> you know, like so, it, it, it's clearly impacting those kids just the same way old games did for us. So, cool. Well, um, I think that's going to do it for tonight's show. Cool. Um, it was the top video game podcast of the week. Jason Thompson was here. I'm Justin Lacey from Horrible Night Chat. We could have done couldn't have done this without you. Thank you for your answers, and we'll be back again next week. We'll see you.